So nearby Lulu, what do you think of Alice Roosevelt? Um, I think she has a cool snake. She does have a cool snake. I can't imagine it's very easy to grow up with a famous parent because it can't be easy to have your every achievement compared to the person who used to embarrass you when you were a child. With that in mind, I'm pleasantly surprised to tell you, our audience, that Alice Roosevelt spent pretty much her entire life kicking the ever-loving sh** out of her father's shadow. Huh, so nearby Lulu, as someone who was raised in America, what did you learn about American President Theodore Roosevelt? A lot of fun, like, little trivia things, but mm -hmm. also the really boring political stuff, like okay. he was against trust, he made weird little... Okay, um... so for this channel, can we just hear about the fun trivia stuff? Because that's the kind of... <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, just the typical stuff you hear, like he was a really sickly kid and his parents were like, none of that, and just made him do boxing yep. <laughs> until he got his asthma away or something like that. Yeah, he boxed <laughs> asthma out of his own body and uh, he famously um, was sealed in both boxing and judo and would randomly throw down with people in the White House. Um, while he was president, he once boxed um, a young soldier who knocked out one of his eyes. Yeah, that's the thing. He punched him so hard he detached one of his retinas, and when the guy was like, oh no, I blinded the president, he's like, jolly good sport. But suffice to say, Teddy Roosevelt was a badass of the highest order to such an extent, typing Chuck Norris facts into a plagiarism checker brings up a copy of his autobiography. Um, a joke that I wrote here, so I'm going to say out loud, so I'm quite proud of that one. So the only thing I really know about like, a lot of the old presidents is like the cool facts about them, you know, given the nature of my job for the last 10 years. So there's all stuff like that, and then it's like, even the presidents who weren't like physically threatening still have like really funny stories about them, like Calvin Coolidge. He would hide in his office um, from his secret service agents, then press the button that said something <laughs> was wrong. Because, fun fact, the president has a button in that office that like, shit's going wrong, I need the secret service in here with guns, like, right now. And he'd press that button and hide under his desk while giggling. And he's the president! Wait, wasn't that Trump's Diet Coke button? The Diet Coke button, yes. Because, <laughs> like, there's just an all-purpose, the president needs someone button, and Donald Trump called it the Diet Coke button. It's life alert, but gilded. <laughs> Help! Help! I've been voted out and I can't get up! <laughs> oh, but speaking of Alice Roosevelt, she used her position as daughter of the leader of the free world um, to break long-standing social taboos for women. Doing things like cavorting around Washington, smoking with a big snake. And you mentioned the snake, so I'm assuming you know its name. Yes! Emily Spinach! <laughs> because it's a little snake and it was green, so spinach, and it was really skinny, like her Aunt Emily. <laughs> And I think that just sums up um, her personality right there, where it's like, I'm going to name this snake after someone I, I don't like. I'm going to give it. I'm going to give this snake an unflattering nickname as a dunk on someone I don't like. <laughs> and like Alice Roosevelt was just known for cavorting about Washington, um, much to the annoyance and chagrin of the press, who'd frequently um, admonish her for her exploits, um, which she did not give one solitary fuck about. And the story goes that nobody would say a bad word about Alice lest they incur the wrath of her famously um, short-tempered father or risk a backhand from her immaculately manicured hand. <laughs> because Alice Roosevelt did not stand for nobody telling her what she could and could not do. Something I summed up my story told about Roosevelt when a foreign dignitary visited the White House, got chewed out by Alice, walked over to the president, asked him to control his daughter. To which Theodore Roosevelt responded, I can run the country or control Alice, not both. <laughs> That's the thing. It's like, controlling my daughter would be as much work as running America. I'm not about to do that, fuck you. So what other shenanigans did Alice get up to? Oh, all sorts, because she also shared her father's love of firearms and would carry a pistol with her wherever she went, um, which she would use on long train journeys to shoot telephone poles when she got bored. And now just imagine <laughs> Alice Roosevelt, who most of the time looked like this, leaning out of like a train window with a gun. That's an album cover right there. <laughs> some Annie Oakley shit. Oh man, that is an erotic photo set that needs to exist. <laughs> Cut it off! Just the women of the Old West. <laughs> <laughs> but as Alice grew and matured, she turned from a young woman who wouldn't let a man tell her what to do into an older woman who wouldn't let anyone tell her what to do. Um, by all accounts, becoming a very witty and acid tongue woman, dubbed by the press, the other Washington Monument. Oh hell yeah. And one of the habits that Alice adopted in her later years was wearing a very large, impractical, but also stylish, wide-brimmed hat. 
and eventually someone works up the courage to ask her why she wore such a fetching but impractical hat. And do you want to guess what Alice Roosevelt's response was? I think what's the pettiest reason you could wear a giant hat? Personal space? It was exactly that, yes. It's because she was so pissed off with men she met trying to kiss her on the cheek to say hello. Ugh. She wore a giant hat so that they couldn't get anywhere near. <laughs> <laughs> and she would reportedly find it endlessly hilarious when she'd meet with politicians, trying to like, you know, just score some points with her. And then like, like uh, just try to figure out a way to get in before they realise I'm not getting through that. Like, the ship from Gallagher could not get <laughs> I'm now kind of picturing just like a tiny old lady with the exact same size hat, no no scaling down, Lady Donatrescu's hat. <laughs> <laughs> that massive, massive hat. I'm just, I'm just picturing that one scene from Scary Movie 3 where for no reason a sheriff's hat gets bigger in every scene. To the point where it's so massive they can't get into their car. I doubt you'll be seeing anything strange on this farm for a long time. We'll see. So that makes her sound, you know, a little unapproachable. Yeah, it makes her sound like a bit of a crotchety old lady, doesn't it? So I should point out that um, Alice Roosevelt reportedly was happy to talk to anybody. She just didn't like arseholes and was unafraid to voice her opinion when said arsehole entered the room and would do so loudly knowing that there's no fucking way they're going to disparage the daughter of Theodore Roosevelt. And she famously, um, in her home, had a cushion which had the words, if you can't say anything nice, sit next to me written on it. <gasps> and that was one of her most prized possessions. And she just sits like, if you can't say anything nice, come sit I want to hear all the Washington gossip. I mean, mood? What a, that, that is life goals right there, isn't it? Old ass lady did not give a fuck. So all I can picture is just Neville's grandma. <laughs> Big I, hat and everything. We do with like the vulture on yeah. it. <laughs> but for, but for Roosevelt, it's like the eagle. <laughs> the bald eagle is on top of the hat. Oh my god! So do you know what we could do now? Let's create the ultimate stay the fuck away from me hat. It's been a while <laughs> since we've done a Photoshop. So we're going to start with um, the best picture of um, Alice Roosevelt we've got available to us uh, behind us now. Um, we're going to start with, as you mentioned, Lady Dimitrescu's hat. And then on top of that, let's put on just an American bald eagle. <laughs> just the American bald eagle right on top for anyone who steps within to like, you know, her circle of authority. Should we put a taxidermy eagle or just a whole ass no, bald really, eagle nest? A real, <laughs> the nest is <laughs> the, the nest. actual nest because you know no fucks in a bald eagle nest. <laughs> Do a rounder face. Do you know those things they have on like um, sombreros sometimes? Those like corks on strings. <laughs> just so like no one can step in. What else can we put on there? Oh, uh, one of those pamphlets that Mormons give you that say, do you have a moment to talk about Jesus Christ? That's an American reference there. <laughs> so if you think that's something that'd keep people away, we can put that on there. You know, put it in the eagle's mouth. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Mormon eagle. Mormon eagle uh, requests a moment of your time, if you would, please. <laughs> Just draw on the edges of the hat. It's on the edges of the hat, razor blades. So have you ever seen that like, amazing video that was distributed to police called Surviving Edge Weapons? No. And they have like a, like, a montage in it of like, oh, here's how uh, like criminals will hide knives inside objects. Because like, I think Red Letter Media did an amazing breakdown of it. And they just show a guy who hides razor blades inside his Coca-Cola hat. What? <laughs> it's just... So razor blades in the hat. Do you like the Peaky Blinders? Uh-huh. So they got their name putting razor blades in their yeah. hat and they'd slash it so you got that. Actually, you know what? Instead of razor blades, um, find the edge from Kung Lao's hat in uh, Mortal Kombat. Do you know the guy yeah. who throws his yeah. <laughs> And then, just because I want the edges of the hat to just put down um, the laser grid from the Resident Evil movie. Do you know the one that cuts Colin Salmon in half? No. Which I only want to mention because it cuts Colin Salmon in half. And I like saying Colin Salmon because his name is Mr. Salmon. And he's such a good actor. And he's just called Mr. Salmon. Why? Why did he try and dodge a laser by doing a backflip? Because <laughs> they have a reference to that in Resident Evil 4 where Leon Kennedy dodges that. Uh, you don't get this reference, but I fucking do. I mention it now because like... In Resident Evil the movie, they get a, like Mr. Salmon gets cut in half by lasers, and then they have it in Resident Evil 4, and Leon just does a backflip over it. He dodges lasers by backflipping. 
Which means that the only person who could ever approach um, Alice Rose, that would be Leon Kennedy, which makes sense. His uh, mission is to protect the daughter of the president. So you know what? The last thing I want is Leon Kennedy just out of fucking frame. <laughs> the shit he beats to get the president's daughter back is insane. Like that man, like he gets 10 bullets in a pistol and he fights like a giant salamander and an 18th century nobleman who's like four foot tall and an alien from Alien. But can he fight weirdos who really want to give a woman a kiss when she doesn't want I one? I think he could, yeah. Uh, if, if that game's taught me anything, it's that like Leon Kennedy is very, very good at getting rid of handsy men trying to gra um, grab the do uh, president's daughter.